welcome. I'm Kate. Yep. Ad-free versions and subtitles are available. Good boy. For weeks, I'd prioritized the garden, <laughs> ignoring tasks at home until they became urgent. <laughs> Wet this. Now it was time to catch up on, well, everything. 134. A million things I haven't done. September 24, 2024. It was too wet for most garden work. After weeks of no rain, the plants were drinking up the water. It was so wet, Pepper got to enjoy his carrot snack in the car. This was a trial poll to see if the carrots needed harvesting. They were passing the taste test. Two days later. The to-do list is getting unbearably long and it is raining outside. So I am running out of excuses to get them done. So I've decided to take the next couple of days to get as many things checked off the list as possible. Let's see how far I get. I forgot a bread yesterday on the counter and I need to turn that into crackers. The first sidetrack didn't take long and set the theme for the day. First, I'm going to use these to make syrup. And because syrup takes a while to warm up, we're going to start that before we do the bread. I sorted the lemon balm into two bowls, checking for spots that didn't look good. I made the base of the syrup sugar water. I've shared the recipe in a previous episode. While that heated, I sorted and weighed the beans I'd shelled the night before. I finally made the dough for the crackers from the forgotten bread dough. To prevent sticking, I stirred the sugar water regularly until all the sugar dissolved. I eyeballed the ingredients, so lots of seeds. When the sugar water was hot, I poured it over the lemon balm in the bowls. They'd go in the fridge after cooling. When it was time for lunch, I had gotten a lot done, but the cracker dough was waiting in the fridge. I'd thrown some canned potatoes into the air fryer earlier and fried some eggs to go with them. We ate and I took a much needed break before getting back to things. It's almost 2.30 and I haven't even finished the crackers. I've done the first part of the syrup and I've made lunch and I did a little bit of this and that. I also had therapy, but I still haven't even finished the crackers. So I really, really need to get that done. Before I could get sidetracked again, I rolled out the cracker dough. We use a tiny pastry roller instead of a rolling pin because we rarely have use for it. With an air fryer instead of an oven, all baked things are smaller anyway. Between reusable baking sheets, the dough rolls out well. It's a sticky mess, but quite doable. If the sheet sticks, a bit of encouragement works just fine. I had some cheese that hadn't worked well on pasta that would be great for the crackers instead. I used a knife to cut it into tiny pieces and added it to the dough before rolling it out. Finally, with most projects checked off, I had a room on the counter again. There really isn't enough counter space in this tiny kitchen, but I make it work most of the time. With an air fryer, making crackers means more work. I am excited to have an oven again at some point.
a lot of things would be easier in a larger kitchen. In a tiny space, I'm always moving things back and forth. And all the while, the kitchen is supposed to look ready to film in, be clean enough to work in. One day, I'll have a real kitchen. Though the small kitchen is probably a blessing, tasks and projects tend to fill up whatever space they can. I'm not convinced a large kitchen wouldn't have me battling to finish projects and preservations just as much. I still dream of counter space. We'd grown a lot of potatoes this year without any experience storing them. A very wet year added more issues. A lot of our potatoes wouldn't store well. People don't tend to agree on the best option, so we'll do some testing. Buckets with and without sand hold potatoes in the basement. A wooden rack holds some more. One bucket had been forgotten upstairs in the very warm hallway. I did what I could to save as many as possible. I washed them, removed rotten ones and trimmed off spots. They are prettier when prepared fresh. Some purple gets lost in the canning process. But this is about preservation, not prettiness. In jars, they'd be good for month and month still. In fall, the canner was almost always on the floor of the kitchen, many stepped toes included. For a few weeks, my days followed the side tracks and detours. I gave up fighting them. I might be a person of routines, but harvests don't follow my schedule. One evening, the walnut tree was suddenly empty. I picked up what I could find. The weather this year wasn't good to the walnut tree. We'll enjoy only a tiny harvest, but there was a harvest. With a surprise harvest, it was getting late, but I had things to get done. A friend had sent us some chilies from his garden, fresh ones and smoked ones. His family still harbors our smoker, as we don't have the right space to use it. There, it gets good use. I diligently saved the seeds from the fresh ones, so we could grow the varieties ourselves. Canned potatoes, fresh tomatoes, some of the chilies from our friend, a mild cheese and some cream. Dinner was a quick but delicious meal, perfect after a long day. This winter, I plan to learn how to make this kind of cheese myself. Hopefully, I'll figure it out. Dessert was our single Petit Cri de Rennes melon, but a single fruit bears plenty of seed for next year. One cantaloupe, one and a half watermelons. We got what we needed to re -sew. The canned potatoes were drying on the counter. The next project was already waiting on the floor. I'd get around to it all in the end. I even finished the crackers. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. Prefer reading, buy my novels to support me instead.